I realized that uh, this is the most important thing to control your mind and uh, to kind of be, be aware of your consciousness and uh, um, because it's running around like two years old child and uh, you need to uh, have uh, have it like have it handy, useful uh, to do something useful for uh, healing or anything else. Um, so, uh, and you answered most of my uh, questions about it, but um, sometimes I'm, uh, uh, during the day, uh, like uh, I found myself doing like here and there, like uh, focusing intent, healing, uh, stuff like this. And sometimes it's very easy. My mind is clear and I can do it and spend like two minutes on it and just move on and do something else. Uh, sometimes it's very hard and uh, noisy and uh, it's hard to control my consciousness and do stuff like this. Um, it's wandering around and I can't focus on the <laughs> healing protocol and stuff like this. So maybe it's related to um, my body, how, how it is right now, what's going on. Maybe it's related uh, on my environment. Um, and I'm wondering if it gets easier with time. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's right on the same subject. It is that unruly child running around and you know, any parent knows who's had an unruly child is that the first thing you do is you have to get them to settle down. <laughs> you can't just grab a child who's in the middle of some kind of wild running around and say, all right, now we're going to do this. It's not going to work. First, you just have to hold them a little bit and then you get them to focus and you, know, you have to settle them down. Well, you have to do the same thing. You have to get yourself settled down. Now with practice, that settling down only takes fractions of a second. It can happen almost instantly, okay? Which also happens to us as we grow up and aren't two years old anymore. We can kind of settle ourselves down pretty quickly, you know, get, get focused. Okay, but how long it might take you to settle down, and even if it's possible to settle down, Yes, has a lot to do with what you're doing, what's in your mind, what's the state of your emotions, uh, you know, how are you feeling, all of those things going on. What just happened in the last 10 minutes of your day? You know, if all that stuff is in an uproar, then settling down may be difficult, it may take a little bit of time. So that's why you find that sometimes you just reach out and it's there. Other times you reach out and it's jumbled. It doesn't seem to be there. And that just takes practice. It's again, your, your mind is not yet disciplined to the point of settling and letting go. You see, everybody's life is full of stress. Everybody's life is full of, you know, do this now. You know, yes, you have six hours worth of work and only half an hour to get it done in. You know, everybody's got that kind of pressure going on most of the time. And you have to be able to just let that go. Just put that aside and let it go and enter a calm space, you see. So that's why people who are really good at doing this tend to be calm and even and not too excitable all the time. They live in that calm space. They've learned to exist there because they don't let things bother them because they don't get twisted up you know around different kinds of issues and feelings and emotions they tend to live in that calm space so it's easy for them then to be much better at their intuitive side because they already have the first step done before they start so that's just, again, a matter of practice. You have to be able to take your busy life and just set it aside and then be able to focus and be still and be quiet and not have any thoughts about it whatsoever. And many people will say, oh, that's impossible. <laughs> you know, when my mind is geared up and I'm, 
you know, I'm bothered about something or even upset about something. I can't just set it down and leave it alone. Well, that takes practice. But that's where we're going with this. Yes, you should be able to just take that life, no matter what's going on in it, and be quiet and be still and not have noise in the background, because that noise is never really helpful. It doesn't help you do anything, pull anything together or solve any problem. It's always just in the way. And it takes a lot of practice to be able to do that. Say, all right, in 10 minutes, I'm going to go in and see the boss. And I don't know whether he's going to be angry or, you know, or not. Well, you should be able to just set that aside and say, yep, but before I go in, I'm just going to relax. And just push that out of your mind to where it's just not there. It's gone. You can sit in perfect still and perfect quiet, even though in 10 minutes you're going to go in and see the boss and you're worried about it. You can just drop that because you are in control of your consciousness. Your consciousness follows your intent. It's not just loose flying around doing whatever it wants to do. Because basically you've learned to let go of the need to control and the fears that give you worry. And you let go of the need for control and for the worry, then it's easy to set things aside. So see how all this is connected? That's, that's the point. If you're going to learn to do these things like, you know, get into the point consciousness and get data out of databases and connect with people, the way you learn to do that is by growing up, get rid of the fear, get rid of the anxiety, get rid of the, uh, uh, you know, the wildness in that mind and just become whole and still. Makes you much more effective. When you finally do go in and see the boss, you'll be so much more effective than if you go in there worried and fearful and on edge. So, yes, that's what's going on. So it's, it's, it's all part of the same thing we've been talking about this morning. It's a matter of just practicing to the point that you can set all those worrisome things to side and just have no thoughts whatsoever. So point consciousness is a is a tool for learning how to focus your intent on what you want it focused on and not let your intention and your mind just run around being upset or nervous or concerned or bothered or even entertained with other things and when you can do that now your focus is so much clearer and you're so much more effective at healing or remote viewing or other things. So yeah, it does have to do with your life and how you feel and what just happened in your day. But the more you practice, the less those things should be a factor. Thank you.